A pleasant good morning. Welcome to Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7 WORX. I'm Jordan Mayer for the third straight week sitting in for Timmy T. In a sense today, not that you won't hear Timmy T's voice today, and that is because we're talking Shaw Volleyball. And Tim Torrance is joining me. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Jordan. How are you, sir? Good, you? Not too bad. A late night for football last night. Now we're talking volleyball this morning, and what a better weekend with the draw being held tomorrow night. Yep, draw tomorrow night, uh, 7 o'clock through the IHSAA uh, TV network that they have looking forward to it uh, find out uh, who we play in, in our sectional down at South Central uh, I'm going to have a little get together at, at uh, my house tomorrow evening with the players so we can kind of do it uh, as a group and uh, looking forward to it but season it, it seems like it just got started and now we're, we're winding it down and I don't know where the time goes. Well, and Travis and I were talking last night about how we were already talking about the end for because soccer sectionals mm-hmm. are this week. Volleyball draws tomorrow, then the football draws the following Sunday, and we're already talking about basketball. It's hard to believe the fall sports season's already over. Yeah, I got, I got basketball schedules on my desk ready to put the schedule <laughs> together for broadcast, and it's it's funny that the seasons move uh, you know, so quickly, but they do. Um, they move they move by quick, and it's, it's, uh, it's one of those where when you have two or three matches every week, you don't have a lot of practice time and, and it, it just kind of seems to fly by and uh, for us um, you know we've had three matches this week we only had um, Wednesday and Thursday to, to prepare uh, for Friday's match after Monday and Tuesday's matches we'll practice today and then get ready for next week where we have three matches again and let's go ahead and talk about this season you this is your third year being a head coach and this is a program that is very, very young this year. You have a couple of your upperclassmen that are here this morning. We'll talk to them in a little bit. But a lot of freshmen came in. Um, you had very, very good numbers this year for Shaw Volleyball. So that had to at least have you optimistic heading into the season. It did. Um, 16 uh, is, is the biggest there's, we've had since I've been here. This is my fifth year coaching. Uh, first two years is JV and the last three is varsity. And um, it's it's nice to start to have those numbers uh, continue to grow. I mean, it, it was a little better last year, but again, 16 this year. But um, one senior, uh, two juniors, five sophomores, and eight freshmen. Um, and and with those numbers, we've got some kids that have come in to play that that either haven't played a lot or haven't played much at all. Um, maybe didn't play junior high, but decided to come out and play some some high school volleyball. And that's for us. It's it's in a small school situation. It's about you know putting numbers together. You can't get healthy unless you have some numbers. Uh, it would be great if we had 11, 12, 13 kids that were outstanding quality club volleyball all year. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 and all that. But we don't have that. So we have to build from within and try to go and and do the best we can with what we have. And and I. The kids have made some remarkable um, progress this year. We haven't we haven't progressed to the point where I feel you know comfortable with it. We we take a step forward. We'll take two steps back. And um, but with a young team, you just keep building. And and they've got a lot of talent. We just haven't put it all together yet. When you go to coach more or less a bunch of freshmen, which is the, the freshman sophomores, the vast majority of your team. How much do you rely on your upperclassmen when it comes to coaching? Well, I have to rely on them a lot, I, and I put a lot of a lot of emphasis on them and what they do. Um, they're the leaders of the team. Um, I expect them to, to keep everybody in line and do what they need to do and teach them as they need to teach them. Um, sometimes, and, and it goes true in coaching for myself, with my philosophy, I think I don't like to overcoach. I like them to, they're going to make mistakes. Um, you want to correct the mistakes, but if you try to correct every mistake they make on the court, um, that's all you would do uh, every time. And, and I want them to kind of suffer some growing pains and then understand what it's going to be when they do it correctly and they start to see success. And um, for the freshmen, it's, it's been a struggle at times because they, they don't understand the game as, as well as what they need to. And you have, you know, such a young team and it at least makes you happy for the future, but at times, how frustrating can it be this year when you you want to kind of sometimes just go ballistic, but you know with freshmen you have to be patient at the varsity level because fre- it's there's a such a difference between junior high and varsity. Well, I've I've had I've had a few parents this year tell me I don't yell at the kids enough, and and I think it, it is in my philosophy is is if I get up and yell at them every time they make a mistake. That's all I would accomplish, and and I think sometimes you you bring down the 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 morale when you when you are con- constantly on them. They have to have an opportunity to make mistakes. They're high school kids. Um, 
it, but in the same note, there are times, and, and we saw it last night at Crothersville, where we just kind of stand around and we're waiting on somebody else to make a play. And for my upperclassmen, um, Grace McAllister, my only senior, uh, Abigail Hill and Phoebe Grody, my two juniors, I rely on them to, to be leaders on the floor. Um, so when things aren't going well, I want them to step in. But in the same token, um, they still have the standard of play that they need to up, uphold. And, and sometimes it's, it's hard to, to make that transition. Um, the last thing I want to do is tell you you made a mistake and then turn around the next play, what do I do? I, I shank a ball myself. So um, it's hard to, to find that happy medium sometimes. But uh, I do rely on my upperclassmen a lot to, to step in and lead. Uh, they lead at practice. They lead during games. We, we make sure that that um, things are done. And, and I'll give you an example. We had we had a situation a few weeks ago where we, we forgot the, the balls, the water bottles on an away game. Um, and it was a mistake that everybody <coughs> made. Uh, but I don't expect my upperclassmen at this point in the game to to make sure that they're to, to grab the, the the equipment to make sure it's on the bus I expect the underclassmen to do that but the upperclassmen I want them to make sure that things are getting done and so we you know it was a learning experience for everybody kind of the hard way yeah, but we did learn and you know, let's talk about the games themselves you did play last night um, dropped a four set decision to Crothersville um, but you've won three four matches over the last couple of weeks you've beaten Trimble County beaten Christian Academy at Madison uh, you know you've also had a lot of matches that you've lost that have gone to five mm -hmm. and four so talk about that we, we we started out the season with a win at Medora Medora only had um, six young ladies on their on their program, so it was a struggle for them. But it was our very first game with with our young kids, and it was kind of a struggle for us as I look back on it now. Um, and then we went for a while without a, a victory, and um, we finally got uh, a win over Trimble County a couple of weeks ago, and then turned around and played them in the Southwestern tournament, and got a win as well. And then uh, Christian Academy of Madison, we played them, <coughs> excuse me, last Monday, and and got a win over them as well. Uh, but it seems like every match we've won the last three, the, the two Trimble matches and the, and, the, and the Cam match, we've taken it to five sets, um, which is good because we get a win. Um, and it's bad because we really should have closed it out earlier than that, but, but just couldn't get the job done. But looking at the Medora match and then moving forward, um, the team has made a lot of progress. You know, it's uh, it's a situation for us where it's it's a slow progress. It's never as fast as what a coach wants it to be. Um, we've developed, but not as as rapidly. We still make some of the same mistakes we've made at the beginning of the season, and those are the challenges that we're trying to correct going into sectional in a couple of weeks. But um, the team has progressed. The maturity has gotten better. Um, we just have some things we need to clean up this last week of the season to prepare for, for sectional in a couple of weeks. I want to ask you this because Grace is here with you this morning who is, I think, plays every sport Shaw has to offer. Mm -hmm. And and she's <laughs> offered to drive the bus, too. So <laughs> Have you let her do that? No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't trust her driving the bus? No, no. <laughs> All right, see what, see what he does to you, Grace? <laughs> but talk about when you have your senior who, you, you know, we encourage, I, I personally encourage kids to be a multi-sport athlete. I think that's good with someone who is a three sport athlete in one season how do you cope with that well it's 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 as difficult for the for the coach and not only me but for the other two sports but it's as, it's as difficult for the coach as it is for the player and she's she is and i think i'm telling you this right this past week correct me if i'm wrong grace you had volleyball monday tuesday soccer wednesday thursday volleyball last night and you're going to run cross country today right yeah. so that's her week so when we don't play soccer or soccer when we don't play volleyball on wednesday thursday i don't see her because she's at soccer uh, where she's going to practice volleyball this morning and then she's going to run cross country this afternoon so her available practice time is really limited um on the other hand i, I mean i've i've spent four years with this young lady and and you're right she plays about everything she possibly can and she's a very gifted athlete um not many uh, athletes, boy or girl, have the ability to do what she does, uh, to have the talent to play multiple sports and play them very well. Um, it's, it's, 
it's a little frustrating for me because I, as volleyball is her number one sport, I think she could take it to the next level. On the other hand, she's helping out other teams, and I think that's fantastic, especially at a small school. So, you know, you cope with it the best you can, you know, and, and we'll take her any way we can get her. She'll she'll do the same thing in the spring. Well, she'll, she'll play two sports. She'll do softball and track. Um, so, and I, I deal with the same thing then. But I, I this is my seventh season. My eighth season with her will be softball. So we spend a lot of time during the school year together, and she's 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 a good one to have around um, because when her mind is focused in the right direction, she can do a lot of things for a team. And and we saw her last night. I mean, she when it comes to blocking, when it comes to kills, when it comes to back row serve receive, when it comes to digs. I mean, she she can do a multitude of things because she's she's just gifted. She's worked hard. I don't want to take anything away from her work ethic because she works hard most of the time like most kids do is it all the time no is, is it enough to suit a coach probably not but i'll take what i can get with her but you know she has a lot of challenges off the 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 volleyball court with with her other sports so you know you just you focus on when you have her and what she can do for you and you just support her when she's off the court the best you can to you know because you you want her to excel in the rest of the sports as well tim you gotta i can tell a colorful couple of girls that are here this morning <laughs> and the, the thing i was when i was talking with coach wilson last week for mm -hmm. football one thing that him and his players that were with him we're talking about was the camaraderie and just how much the players just thoroughly enjoyed being around each other and that's one of the things that they all said that they're going to miss more than anything they said wins and losses are you know that's part of the game you want to win but the bond you build is kind of the most important thing how close is the bond with this team uh, sometimes painfully close uh, actually um, I'm not going to tell you they enjoy being around each other all the time uh, but most of the time yeah um, and when and I've told these these girls uh, more than once when they when they're working together on the court they're a really fun team to watch and last night we had a lot of instances where we worked together we we got good uh, passes we got good sets we got good we got good kills um, and they're a fun team to watch when they work the ball north and south when they go side to side not so much it, it, it looks like a, a bunch of uh, kids running around on a playground sometimes but you know they they do well together and again in the small school when you have such small classes and, and small groups that uh, you kind of get to know everybody um, it's not like the bigger schools where you have more kids and you, you kind of just touch the surface but you know I think this group of volleyball kids has grown together um, they've worked together they they practice together so you spend a lot of time and it's just kind of like coaching you spend a lot of time with them so you know, I, I've adopted 16 kids during the course of the fall season uh, to become one of my family because I spend as much or more time with them than I do at home with my own family. So it's uh, it's you get to know them, you know, and as I mentioned earlier in the first segment, you know, they they have times with you and they have times without you. But their life is important off the volleyball court. Um, how their day goes, you know, what they do, you know, they have ups and downs in their personal lives too, so you got to deal with, with that because sometimes they bring it with them to, to practice their games. So you have to figure ways to, to, to be positive influences in their lives. And, you know, two of them here, uh, we have Abigail Hill, we have Grace. Uh, talk about what these two have meant to the team. Um, as I said, Grace is, is a, is a four-year volleyball player. Um, she, her and I, as I mentioned, have been together for a lot of seasons. Um, she's, I know she's tired of looking at me every season except for winter months, and then she gets to look at Terry King. So, um, But it's, it's, she's enjoyable. I enjoy being around her. She's got a very warped sense of humor a lot of times, so you have to learn to deal with that. Um, the, the only thing Grace does... Um, that probably she doesn't need to do is she doesn't really know when to be serious um, <laughs> because she likes to liven things up and and that's just grace and again you, you learn to deal with it but she is she's a joy to be around I'm gonna miss her when she's gone um, she's our only senior this year so she she brings a lot to the table for us and for Abigail she this is her third year with us um, 
her and Phoebe Grody, who's, who's um, taking the SAT this morning, so she's not with us today. But Abigail is, is our setter this year. It's the first year that, that she's full-time set. Um, and for anybody that wants to give it a whirl, um, setting is a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, and for a first-year varsity setter, I mean, she set a little bit in her freshman and sophomore years, but for, for this year to be a full-time setter, um, we've relied on her a lot. She's had some successes. She's had some failures, and you're, and you're going to have, um, but she's getting better. Um, we, we, we tend to tweak as we go, and, and we talk to her about some, some things we, we saw, and I saw a couple things last night we're going to talk about here in just a little bit after we leave here about <laughs> things to change to make her better, but, but she's, she's like Grace. When you look at them and you instruct them on things that they need to do, they don't give you that blank stare. They look at you and they nod their head and they understand what you're now whether they do it or not remains to be seen, but they at least acknowledge with the respect that you're you're trying to instruct them to do some different things and and um we're looking forward to Abigail and, and going to sectional and then having her again next year as our setter and, and what she can do for us. And, uh, you know, both of these two are great examples of leaders for our team, and, and I, I'm very pleased to have them on our, on our schedule. Well, and, again, I'm just looking here at the two of them, how much they're smiling and having a good old time, just the two of them. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I could just tell there. but Sometimes a little too good. <laughs> see, see, girls? But at the end of the day, though, when you look back, these could be girls who, when they leave here, they could talk about how great you were as a coach. And again, the wins and losses, those are part of the game. But they could talk about maybe just you as a coach, how much fun it was playing for you because of the camaraderie that they had, just how much fun they just enjoyed being around each other. Right. And, and great coach, no. Uh, okay, coach, yes. I'm learning I'm learning like they are, and they know that. Yeah. And and But I'm, I'm hoping that what they get out of, being on a volleyball team or being with this program will, will carry them, you know, beyond high school, and that's what I want. I want them to, to be impacted by what they do and what they learn. You know, volleyball in any sport is more than just playing a game. It's it's the impact you have off the floor and off the field and off the court. And and I'm, I hope they have an impact of of what it takes to be successful in life because a lot of what they do will will parlay into their life after high school. There's a reason this is called academic-based athletics, mm -hmm. because it's right. not just about the wins and the losses. It's about preparing them for the next level of life. Exactly. Tim, go ahead and introduce them. Well, we'll let Grace talk first, because she's our lone senior. And, and again, um, she's been with us four years. Uh, most of her her uh, freshman year was spent at the the uh, JV level, but you know, for freshman or for sophomore and junior year, she split a little time, uh, I think, at, at the sophomore year on on JV, and then the last two seasons has been strictly varsity. And and for us, we've got kids, some kids playing this year both ways on JV and varsity, just because we have the number situation and, and the talent situation. But you know, if I wanted Grace, if I ask her right now, hey, can you play me a, a set of JV? She'd go, yeah, all right. So she just she just likes to play. I mean that's just the way she is, and I can put her out there in just about any situation, um, and, and she'll succeed at it. One of the things that I know she wanted to do this year was play back row because last year she was only a front row player. She wanted to play all the way around in all six positions, and and I think she's for the most part proven that she belongs on the floor. Does she make mistakes? Yep. Does she hit the ball every time I want her to? Nope. Does she does she put herself in the right position all the time? Nope. But does she? understand the whys and what fors absolutely and I don't even have to all we have to do is make eye contact and and she knows I don't have to get up and scream at her I don't have to get up and yell at her I typically don't have to point she knows when she when she's not where she's supposed to be she will look at me and tell me I need to be right there and and that to me is identifying where you need to be is one thing now putting herself there the next time is a whole different story <laughs> but I, I'm so proud of, her, of what she does for, for Shaw High School and, and, and the sports she plays and the effort that she's given me over now three and a half years it's it's been a pleasure to be around her all right well let's talk with her then million dollar woman who does everything how are you Grace I'm good how are you I'm doing wonderful so why don't you go ahead and talk about your senior year um, well, it's busy. It's definitely busy, but that's what makes it fun. You're only in high school for four years, so you might as well do everything you can while you are in high school. Is that why you play all three sports, like in the fall, and you do two? And <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to 
to be to joke when I say that. Is that why though? You just want to have fun and just do anything you can. Well, I ran cross country and played volleyball my freshman year. That's when I started. That was the first year I ever played volleyball, and then I didn't play soccer till my junior year because they didn't have a girls soccer team and I was kind of like mm, I'm not gonna play that much and then last year my brother was a freshman so I was like we'll both play together it'll get him a good chance to play so that's when I started doing three how do you enjoy that I honestly love it it's always you're always doing something and this is the best of my grades are during the fall because I have to manage my time so well Okay, so in the in the winter you're like, yeah, I don't have to do this. As yeah, much. exactly. <laughs> I push it off. This is way too much free time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you talk about this, and you know, you played volleyball now for four years. What's it been like playing for Tim for four years? It's so much fun. Like you, every year there's a new set of freshmen, and you just learn to grow with them. People that you've never thought you'd be friends with, you're best friends with. Like you guys, you just become a family. Talk about the, you know, we've talked about camaraderie and the relationship. What's your relationship like with the rest of the team? Um, well, we all get mad at each other and we all yell at each other sometimes, but then at the end of the day, we're all best friends. We're like sisters to each other. Like, I'd do anything for these girls. Uh, and you mentioned as a senior, you're the lone one. How often do you step in and tell the freshmen, hey, do this, that way Tim doesn't have to step in? Um, I tell him probably a couple times a game. I try to do it as nice as I can, and I'm like, I don't mean to be mean. Like, it's just how I'm coming off right now. Like, so I kind of always kind of just step in and be like, you just take a step forward or don't reach. Like, things I did as a freshman. Do what are some of the – you have – a couple weeks left here in the season, hopefully more than maybe a couple weeks, depending on what happens in the sectional. What are some of the goals you have left in the season? Um, just to give it all that we've got and to finish the year strong. We might not win sectional. It would be great if we did, but just if we go out and play with everything we have and put everything into it. Um, you're a senior. Where are you going to be heading to school, or where are you looking at? Um, I have. I'm looking at Montana State, UK, Purdue and maybe Ohio State, and I want to major in animal science with a pre-vet focus. Okay, you have three of those schools that are <laughs> in this area, and then you have this school, which has the population of that barn out there. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you? Why is that school a possible consideration? Um, well, it kind of popped up one day, and I was looking into it, and I went and visited in May, and it's absolutely beautiful. I love the campus. I love everything about it, but it's just, it's far. Yes, it is, and not much there. <laughs> All right, well, Grace, best of luck to you, okay? Thank you. All right, Grace McAllister and Tim, now we're going to be talking with a junior and a young lady, also a multi-sport yep. athlete, but she does just one sport in the fall, right? <laughs> that's right. She only does one, um, and that's volleyball. And I want to go back to Grace one more time because we talked about her three sports, but one of the things that you may not know is that her family owns a farm so when she's not busy playing she's farming with her parents so she stays really busy so it's not like she goes home on the weekend <laughs> and just lays around and does nothing she has farm work to do and chores to do so i i couldn't do it do you so. have a life grace <laughs> no no, no she <laughs> <laughs> but abigail again she's our junior uh one of our two phoebe grody is our other junior again she's taking the sat this morning but but these two um they have done a great job uh, coming in and playing. Um, and I'm going to mention Phoebe real quick. Um, she led us in serving last year, her freshman year, a couple of years ago. I wouldn't let her serve because she couldn't get the ball over the net. And then she comes in her sophomore year and leads us in serving. And I think that's a testament to her work ethic on, on trying to, to learn and understand the game. Um, she's our libero, uh, our back row specialist. And, and again, she's done a nice job. Still got a ways to go before we get to where we need to be. But uh, it's, it's a having her as, as one of our three leaders is, is nice uh, because she can direct traffic on the floor as well. Abigail, again, as I mentioned, um, our setter, um, and it's it's been good at times and a little bit of a struggle at time, uh, but, but she does work hard. She understands where she needs to be. We've got things to tweak with her um, that, that will make her a much better setter. Um, but it, you know, she's she's kind of like Grace. If I ask her to drive the bus, she would. She wouldn't. She wouldn't shy away from it. Um, and it's it's nice to have kids that have 
mm -hmm. uh, multiple talent and, and have an open mind to do that. Sometimes you talk to a kid about, uh, well, we need you to do this. Well, I can't, you know, and I don't, I don't think I could tell either one of these two or either one of the three upperclassmen that I need them to do something. They tell me they couldn't do it. Um, they do everything that the coaches ask them to do, and, and they do it to the best of their ability. We're just not to that, to that point yet, uh, but we're working hard to get there. Well, and <laughs> we're going to now talk with Abigail, Gail, good morning. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. So, <laughs> why don't you? So, are you gonna drive the bus now? Like, like, like Tim said you would do? I don't. I don't think he'll let me. I mean, I would if I could, but I don't think he'll let me. No, you're probably right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so your third year playing volleyball. So you started here. Your first year was Tim's first year as head coach. Talk about what it's been like playing for him. It's been really fun. Um, we've obviously had our ups and downs, as he said, but Tim, he's just a really good guy. He's a really good coach. He's given me a lot of good advice, and I just love playing for him. He's the best. <laughs> I heard sometimes when he gets upset, he'll sometimes take it out his, on his employees, or so I've heard. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I don't know how I'd know that. Um, <laughs> But, you know, as a junior, you are one of the leaders. There aren't many upperclassmen this year. What is it like playing with so many young people in freshmen and sophomores? Um, it's difficult <laughs> because we're young, and obviously the freshmen, uh, they don't have a lot of experience with varsity volleyball. So, and it's a much different story between junior high and varsity. It, it's just, it just is. And we're young, and we still need to work on certain things and we're still getting used to our rotation and where we need to be so it's it's difficult <laughs> your role as a setter talk about how, what you've done this year um well I have to be in the middle front all the time no matter what I have to get the second ball unless you know it's five miles away from me and I can't get it but um, I try to set to the hitters as much as I can so we can get an opportunity to potentially win the point, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, we just got to get a good pass, and I got to get a good set, and we can work with it. You've got this week left of the regular season. Obviously, you'll know uh, about your sectional on Sunday night. Talk about your final week and then heading into the sectional. Well, we play Madison on Monday, so I think that will be a little difficult just considering. Um, and then our sectional, we, I think, did we get moved up in the sectional? No, we, no, we, did, we, we just didn't? got shifted. Okay, we got shifted. Okay. You went up to 2A this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, we have more difficult teams in our sectional, so that we just got to give it all we got. And I'm really sad that this is the last week because I really love this sport and I'm going to miss it. So, yeah. You do other sports as well. What other sports do you play? I play basketball and tennis. So, you don't so you don't get much of an off season. You go from one sport right to another. Yeah. Talk about what that it, how that affects your school and just your life as a as a whole. Um, it keeps me busy, but it also teaches me time management skills because you got to you have to fit in time for your schoolwork and got to keep your grades up and it's it teaches you Really good time management skills, and yeah. So. Excellent. Well, I'm not going to ask you about college because I'm pretty sure you're not thinking about that yet. <laughs> no, so. not yet. All right. Does that young lady on the end want to chat with us this morning? Or you want to chat? <laughs> Are you too busy eating? Okay, she's, e she's <laughs> eating. That's okay. Well, Gail, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. All right. All right, Tim, as we get ready to wrap up the show here, um, a fun group of girls you have. They are, they are a very unique group. They're a fun group. Um, you know, and as I said uh, earlier, we, we've got eight freshmen, and, and Gail mentioned it, it's kind of frustrating at times mm -hmm. because we've got five of those eight that play some significant varsity minutes, uh, points for us. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a learning curve for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a patient mm -hmm. learning curve, and sometimes that's as difficult as anything you've ever done is to be patient uh, but it, it is what it is and, and again every coach in America wants their kids to accelerate their their ability a whole lot faster than what it is but you're, when you're dealing with you know 14 15 16 year old high school kids it, it's got to come at the pace that it has to come and they're so easy to deal with I'm sure right uh, they again they are a, <laughs> they are a fun group 
uh, to, to be around um, all the time, no. I mean, it's just it's it's kind of like kind of like your family. You know, you love your family to death, but you know sometimes too much time with them can be too much. So you know, these this group is is a good group to be around. Um, if we if we can just get a little more focus, I think we'll be a, a lot better, um, and we can just. Um, you know, challenging them to, to change some of the things that they do has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can get them to do that and just ch change some of the mentality, and that's what we've got to really work hard on the last couple of weeks is, is changing our men mentality and accepting some of those things outside the, the box that we have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always done it this way, so this is the way I always know how to do it. Uh, you know what, we may need to change it to do something different to make us more successful. And, and getting outside that comfort zone a lot. Uh, for these kids has been very challenging. Excellent. Well, Timmy T, I appreciate you joining me this morning, um, and best of luck in this final week. I know you have three game, three matches this yep. week, and then sectionals. So, best of luck to you. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'd rather be on that side of the <laughs> table than this side. Indeed. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> well, maybe you can do that again next week. How maybe. about that? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Tim Torrance, Shaw Volleyball. Thank you very much to Grace McAllister, Abigail Hill. I don't know the name of you, young that's, lady. That's Lauren Knoble. Oh, hi, Lauren. Well, uh, th thank you for showing up as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us this morning. We're going to step away. We'll get one more break in and send it back to the best Friday music. This has been Coach's Corner live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop here on Works 96.7. A routine is a good thing to have. And sometimes a routine is a good thing to break. Start your morning at McDonald's with a hot, savory breakfast prepared fresh every morning, like a sausage McMuffin with egg or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that you can now mix and match for just four bucks until 11 a.m. Because if you don't deserve a morning that's a little easier and a lot tastier, who does?